This is the DTV Digest, the podcast that brings you news and reviews of films which didn't make it to the cinema. And now, here's your host, Mike Parkin. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the DTV Digest. I'm your host, Mike Parkin, and joining me tonight are Richard Hawes. Hello, everybody. And Stephen Lockridge. Hello. This week, we've got four main reviews to kick off with. And we're going to be going over to Bruce Willis in Killing Field, also known as Survive the Game. Uh, then we have Seance, The Devil to Pay, and See for Me. Our short shot this week is Swarm, and our DTV throwback is The Demolitionist. So without further ado, let's crack on. Our first review then is Killing Field. When a drug bust goes wrong, Detective Cal is forced to leave his wounded partner behind while he chases one of the suspects. They arrive at a farm where the owner is still grieving the loss of his wife and child and a tense standoff ensues. Okay, so everything I've said there is bullshit. Um, what we actually have here is the two most inept cops ever trying to bust a drug deal without any backup, body armor, or even weapons that shoot straight. <laughs> it is the worst. This is um, what I was going to say, actually, because yeah. the thing, like right at the start, sorry to interject. No. Bruce on. Willis gets shot. And it's a completely his own fault. He's like right out in the open. He's right not out in the open. <laughs> they, you know, he got three bad guys and two and, and two cops unloading clip after clip at each other, even though you don't actually see them reload. And the only thing that gets hit is Bruce Willis. Once. It is ridiculous. It is the, An the injury like, to seems to completely forget about. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, yeah. He sort of looks down and goes, oh. Oh, look. And that's oh. about it. Any, you know, is neither neither cop actually identify themselves as cops, either. They just, you know, sneak into this thing and just start shooting. Basically, it is dreadful, in a word. Um, at the other end, we've got um, what's his name, Chad Michael Murray. Yeah, he's done yeah. a few films with Bruce. Yeah, um, as this sort of nine. grieving guy who, who who's unfortunately, you know, his wife and daughter are dead because of him and, it, and his crappy driving skills. Um, so, you know, he's probably wallowing in guilt as much as anything else. Uh, he doesn't live on a fucking farm. He, he lives in a luxurious, um, you know, apartment, not, not an apartment, but, you know, it's... it's acreage of um luxury sort of holiday home kind of place with its own jacuzzi and, and everything and, and sort of separate buildings it's kind of a farmhouse though. it's not a fucking yeah. farm it really isn't what's he farming <laughs> exactly what is he farming on on his two acres of land yeah because that seems to be what he's got it, it, <laughs> it looks like i mean seriously it looks like the sort of place they used in other bruce willis films you know um like uh, was it um, running out of death? Yeah, well, um, out of death. Yeah, I was out of say. death. Mm. Sorry. Apex. And um, apex. You know, the, the foliage around the house looks very similar to to those sort of like um, you know the, the locations look very similar to those films. Well, that's what I made a note of. I've written a warehouse, house, field, not unlike. Mm. Out yeah. of death. Although this is a lot better than out of death, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, you're show, sure. show you're working you're, out. No, um, Steve, let, let's go to you first. Um, what, what do you think of this thing? Well, it's, you know, it's the same shit, different day, really. It's <laughs> typical boring Bruce Willis starring. Well, you know, actually, to be fair, he probably did more than a day on this one. He probably did at least two or three, but it's it's the same stuff, but almost it's better than. Apex Predator. Better, yes, it is. You know, yes, it's better than that. That's, that's, we're gonna, that's if we're going to damn it with faint praise, then yes, you're right. Bruce is yeah. back in a chair um, this time again. <laughs> yeah, odd. he's 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 like seagalling it from from right at the beginning. Yep. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's a nice location. 
and it was a sunny day. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's 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 about it. I mean, to be fair, all the performances are terrible. Everyone is awful, especially um the Baywatch one. Um Baywatch. Donna Dierico. Donna Dierico, was it? Yeah. Was yeah. she in Baywatch? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um I, I, I say what the only the, the, the best part of it is, I think, it is when Simon Phillips calls Bruce Willis a cunt. I, I, I but he wasn't in the he, same room, though, was he? It's, it's this usual thing. It's a no, skull trick of, like, you know. No, I think he was. He's, he's just yeah. on his knees right in front of him. You know, when he's... Uh, imagine that. He gets to call Bruce Willis a cunt to his face. That's, yeah, that's a high point in your career. Him. Yeah. Isn't it? He, he's like, yes, I'm having that. But mm. yeah, it's the same ridiculous action again. I mean, the car chase is, it lasts about 10 minutes and <laughs> it's, it, it's it, they're going about four mile an hour. You know what I mean? It's not even a chase. It, it, oh, yeah, it's just yeah. frustrating. It, yeah, so, some bits of it are undercranked and other bits are sort of played in real time. It's like, mm. yeah, it, it just makes no sense after that film yeah. and it, yeah. Here's a question. Here's a question for you both. Go on. Okay. In a, in a film like this, is it is it going to provide more tension and, and provide the the hero with, with greater odds to overcome if the people he's up against were actually professional, adequate, you know, <laughs> reasonably good at being bad guys <laughs> instead of just being complete dicks and complaining about it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Is, is, that, is that what the audience wants to hear? Is, is these supposed hard, hard men sort of complaining about their day job? They're like, mm, yeah. You know, this, uh, no, been it's like, uh, you know, Apex where, you know, the hunters are bickering between each other and mm. one second it out a bit further. It's kind of like that, but without the death scenes at the end. Mm. And then, you know, just to leave them for the cop and Bruce Willis to kill them or whatever. And yeah, it's just the same old shit. <laughs> it's just it's, on, a, on a nice little location, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Rich, your, your thoughts on this? I actually rather liked it. The, um, uh, it's from, it's directed by James Cullen Bresick, who did, he's done quite a few other things, but notably uh, the Steven, well, Steven Seagal film yeah. in sort of inverted. Uh, commas the um, uh, beyond the law mm. and uh, it's the first produced script by the uh, youtuber and filmmaker ross peacock so i was mm. always very interested to see mm. it turned out. now i was just looking up um when it was originally announced and it seems the original script was uh, described uh, thus as uh hang on. it's uh, basically uh, well, basically exactly the same, but it, the the lead character was a woman, uh, so they ch they changed it to. Uh, I think I think it could have. I think it might have been too similar to Out of Death if they'd have had the the female mm -hmm. lead. Maybe that was the concern mm -hmm. there. But, uh, I don't know, but um, uh, but anyway, we we they got it changed. It's Chad Michael Murray now, and I I think he's fine. I think he's all right. I've quite liked him in the, the two or three films that I've seen him in. He, he's uh, he sort of carries it quite well. Where where it goes, I mean, there's there's a lot of characters in this, and where mm -hmm. it really goes wrong is with the Mickey and Mallory knockoffs. Uh, played oh by God, um, yeah, Zach Ward and and uh, I can't remember Kate Katzman. Name. But mm -hmm. they are yeah. they are so <laughs> unfortunately. I mean, I'm not I, I don't mind Zach Ward. I mean, he's pretty good sometimes. I mean, he was in the Beyond the Law as well, actually. But um, they're like overacting like crazy, and it's not mm. good. It's not. It's not. It's not good what they're doing. Doesn't fit the material. No, but there's a no. couple of other, other a couple of the other heavies. One of whom is Simon Phillips, which is great because you get to see Simon Phillips play opposite yeah. Bruce Willis and actually act, act his pants off against him. Because mm. uh, I think he did a really mm. good job. I, I liked him in it. And um, the uh, then there's the other guy who who's na who I recognise, but whose name I can't remember. Who is the he, at the one point in the movie goes out to the truck and and stuff. Uh, to to move something, he keeps having he keeps bickering basically. Yeah, he's sort of complaining a lot. Yeah. yeah, I didn't mind him. I thought I I quite uh, I got on the right. And then there's the the wet the obligatory well dressed 
villain uh, sort of leading the group kind of thing. Mm. It was it was just a bit rubbish. Um, yeah, so the Mickey and Mallory true romance sort of natural born killers knockoff kind of stuff just didn't really work. Or more more natural born killers really. That you see, it's interesting like. you went there. You know, you you, yeah. you drew that comparison. I I just went straight Harley Quinn. Yeah, you know, I did. It's Harley. It's Mister and Mrs. Harley Quinn, basically. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, I'm going back to the yeah. source. Yeah, <laughs> so, but, but it's um, all based on, I guess Harley Quinn must be. Yeah, is it, pretty much based on Mallory and and all those. Uh, uh, Mickey, Mickey and That's Mary. true. Yeah, I guess so. Anyway, I mean, I don't know. Harley Quinn might predate. Could be from the eighties. I don't know. Mm. Um, no, no she's created for the Batman animated series. We're talking. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nine, nine, one. Yeah, like, yeah she, probably, she probably does. Yeah. So, um. Um. Yeah. So what I'm going to say is. I quite I thought it was be- better than a lot of the other ones. I would say I liked the script. I thought you know wh- how much of it has whatever been changed. I don't know, but I thought there were some snappy bits of dialogue and stuff. There's too many characters in this version. Don Derrico and stuff not really necessary. Um, mm. There's there's like a driving scene where it's really really obviously digital and just looks rubbish. Unfortunately, that's the I think that's like the car chase scene you, mm. were, you were seeing earlier, Mike. Yeah. Uh, Oh, when Bruce is shot, all his unconvincing winces were <laughs> quite <laughs> hilarious. Uh, and he, he's t- once again he's tied to a chair and he's rescuing like he was in Hard Kill. Oh, on, and uh, what's the other thing? Oh yeah, at the end he seem he sort of seems to forget that he was shot and he starts swinging a chair around. <laughs> uh, and and yeah. and I don't remember what happened here, but I've written down why is Phillips so scared? Why not just shoot? Does that mean anything? Yeah. yeah, yeah, but uh, again, I I don't think he was in the same room as Willis during that scene because it keeps no. cutting between the two. But they're never in the same shot. So yeah. you know that was, was probably the direction that he was being given. You know, right. um, <laughs> and then they but, cut it together and it just didn't quite yeah. blend. Doesn't quite but, yeah. fit. But there's um, you know there's two other sort of female characters in this. Um, We've got uh, Donna Derrico as Carly, who's the blonde one, mm-hmm. who sort of seems more like, um, you know, she she wants to be sort of one of the boys, sort of. Uh, one of what, she's one of the more sort of competent ones, with a bit of military training mm. sort of thing. Um, but then we've got Yulia Class as well as as Lisa, and she's sort of like dragged into it. Um, she's kind of in the background, and then sort of you know the bad guy Frank sort of basically forces her to sort of come closer and do you know, and forces to get a reaction out of her. And I think the intention was that she was meant to be a real badass character, you know, and it was going to be a case of you know she's the one where the kid gloves are going to come off and and we're going to get something, and it just never really happens, unfortunately. It's just, you know, it's 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 a real damp squib, unfortunately. Um, the one other thing as well, um, because you know, all these characters are working for another character, um, who's the big boss man sort of thing. The and, guy. Sorry, yeah, the guy in the suit. Well, we've got two guys on suits, haven't we? We've got, we've got Frank, oh. who's, who's the one who's sort of controlling everyone on, on the yeah. site, oh, and, yeah, and he, right. yeah, he's, yeah. he's talking to, to his boss as well, yes, basically. I remember now, yeah, and yeah. You know, and it's sort of building up to this sort of like, oh, you know, don't make this guy angry. He's a real sort of tough bastard and everything. And we finally cut to him and I thought, it's a fucking kid. He looks about 12, doesn't he? He looks about 12. He looks like he's he's sort of like thrown on a bit of, you know, sort of five o'clock shadow um, in the makeup department or something. And I almost imagined him having like a squeaky voice. (laughs) You know, like his voice is just breaking or something. And I thought... This this guy this guy is supposed to be the one that everyone's terrified of upsetting and everything. It it just doesn't work. It really doesn't. No. You know, he's supposed to be like Bruce Willis's nemesis and all this. You know, the guy he's never been able to put away. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. like, well, of course you haven't yeah. had a chance to put him away. He's been, you know, he's been a juvenile <laughs> for so long. Just <laughs> right. say as well the other cop. Um, is it Sven Temmel? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he. Cal? I didn't like him very much. <laughs> Yeah, he just doesn't do anything really, does it? You know what I mean? It didn't leave he, any impression on me whatsoever. N- n- neither of them, neither him nor Chad no. Michael Murray, really had a lot to do in this. Again, no. it's, it's it's another one of these occasions where just sit back and let the bad guys destroy themselves, sort of thing. 
you know, just let mm. just let them keep talking themselves into a corner, and then sort of pick them yeah. off one by one, sort of thing. It's yeah, they, they, they just don't really saying. have anything to do. That actor who I couldn't remember his name, uh, mm. who I said I quite liked, and I did recognise. He's uh, Sean Kanan. He's from Karate Kid Three, and he's also in Cobra Kai. Ah, okay. Um, but I haven't watched Cobra Kai, but it's it, it's mm. probably Karate Kid Three that I remember him. You know, recognise him from. I'm sure he's done loads of other stuff. Mm. You saw him with a mohawk, couldn't it? Basically, in this. Uh, probably, I can't remember. Yeah. Honest, it's been a f- <laughs> this isn't the most memorable film. You can't remember the most memorable. Ago. The most memorable characteristic he had was having a mohawk, and you can't remember it. I don't know. I remember him. Com- I remember him sort of complaining a lot. Is one yes. kind of the characteristic. Like. Yeah, but, it's ridiculous overall. But anyway, scores on the doors. So, Steve. Um, four. Mm-hmm. And Rich. I was going to go seven, but I think maybe a six is more appropriate. So yeah, six out of ten. Even at a six, that's the highest score for any Bruce Willis film that we've uh, we've reviewed. I'm going <laughs> to split the difference. I'm, I'm giving this one a five. It's it's just bland. I think overall, that's that's the feeling I came mm. away with. It was very very vanilla. Um, yeah, okay. Bruce Willis is in it longer than usual. I thought he was going to be out in the first scene. Yeah, you know, so did I, yeah. He, I. I thought, oh no, he's he's dead. <laughs> that's it. That's he's it. shot. I was like, because, wow, that was yeah. like because <laughs> his partner, his partner just just leaves him there, you know, and then he turns up, you know, yeah. the bad guys obviously picked him up and brought him yeah. down. But yeah, it, it, this is just such a bland film. Um, I, I can kind of see where it wants to be, but this didn't get there at all. So there we have a nice spread of a four, a five, and a six for Killing Field, also known as Survive the Game in the US. Go check it out. Our next review is Seance. When Camille Meadows transfers to the prestigious Fairfield Academy for Girls, she soon finds herself butting heads with the local elite clique but also learns that the girl who previously resided in her dorm killed herself. Not only that, but she gets the feeling that the dorm is haunted. Um, I really enjoyed this, I have to say. It's not got the hu- a huge budget, but I think they, um, they work really well with what they've got. Uh, a very engaging cast and some nice twists. Over to Steve. Um, I'm going to disagree with you. I didn't like this at all. Um, I don't think it knew what it wanted to be. You've got like the slight supernatural element in it with it that lasts about halfway, then it kind of turns into a, a slasher. And then, you know, kind of the, the twist, which, which is so blatantly obvious what's coming. And then it throws in another twist at the end, which kind of baffled me. Um, I think they did well with what they had, money-wise and stuff like that. It, you know, it was well done. It obviously very, very cheaply done. And the performances were okay, but it just didn't grab me. I just thought it was quite flat. And then there's no real or anything like that until like the final scene where it just goes a little bit over the top I thought it I just I just found it very very bland hmm. it, uh, interesting bit bit different of opinion um, Rich what did you make of uh, Seance I'm, I'm on your side of the fence uh, Mike because uh, I really liked it uh, it's it's from the it's the director talk, uh, of the feature directing debut, I should say, because uh, he's directed other things. Uh, the feature directing debut of, of the writer of The Guest and Your Next, mm. Simon Barrett. I haven't seen Your Next, but I really like The Guest. Your uh, Next is very good. Your no, Next is great. Yeah. yeah. And the and yeah, this this is a, a slasher movie with bells and whistles and, and stuff on it. Uh, and we've, you know, we've seen a few slasher movies lately. I mean, Invitation is the one that sort of jumps to mind. Mm. sort of being a kind of a similar setup. I mean, there's, there's a little bit of like a Black Christmas Eve sort of thing as well with the setting and, and that, because it's mm. all set in a, uh, I don't know if it's exclusively a girls' school, but it, it, it sort of, or academy or something, it seems to be. 
anyway, mm. the, which also makes me think of like Witches of Amateurville, stuff like that. Mm. But the, <laughs> um, yeah, so almost an exclusively female cast. There's like like one like one maybe two male characters in there because originally I was I was watching it I was saying wow it's like an entirely female oh no it's not it's not an entirely mm. female cast. Yeah. but um but for the most part uh it's good and they're like you say very strong engaging characters and stuff um it is a slasher movie so it is quite familiar ground but you know anyone going to see you know the new scream or or something is you know this is that kind of movie and you know similar in a, in a few in a few ways although obviously it's got its own identity but the yeah i thought mm. the the cast was really good uh suki waterhouse as the you know the english girl amongst the, all the uh, the americans because uh, they never really explain why she's why she's english uh, I, I suppose you don't necessarily mm. have to but the um uh, she transferred from belgium Belgium. Oh, yeah, okay. she should probably... she come from some dance. <laughs> she come from some ballet school in in Belgium. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So there's, um, I thought the soundtrack was cool. Uh, I thought it looked, you know, yeah, limited location, limit, you know, but it all works, flows really well. I didn't mind, you know, the, you know, the the, the shifts and changes in what the plot was trying to do. You know, again, seen that all before in. Very, I, I'm not going to mention the films because if I mention the films, it kind of gives it away. Yeah. But the um, mm. but yeah. So I think something if you compare it, it 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 it's one of the best of the current crop of slasher movies, I would say. And it's you can check it out on DVD or Blu-ray, but it is also on Shudder, and I do think it's definitely worth a watch. It's only an hour and a half. It's 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 very brisk. Doesn't outstay its welcome. Mm. Yeah, I, I I really enjoyed it. I, lo- I love you know Tsuki Waterhouse is a very good protagonist in this you know sort of um not willing to sort of put up with the um the bullshit of some of the sort of mean girls as it were i thought thought that was really well handled well there's an air of mystery around there isn't there as well yeah Mm. there's nothing you 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 think it's like not quite right here so there's Mm. you know that you're waiting for the other shoe to drop or whatever the uh the turn of phrase a little bit yeah yeah and yeah there, there is this sort of you know is there a supernatural element isn't there a supernatural element and, and I, I did like the way it played with that and then sort of like reversed your expectations again. <laughs> you know, so you think, you think you've got a sus and it sort of goes, actually, you know, <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, there, there was, you know, a little bit of gore early on, you know, with the stabbings. And I think the, the, the Oriental girl who gets slashed, you know, it is quick, but it, mm. is, it is still quite a decent sort of like... Um, it looks pretty nasty kind of kind of moment i was uh, you know i did think we we're going to get something out of um uh, the remake of suspiria when she was doing yeah, her dancing yeah. Um, yeah. but but instead we get some something which was still pretty well handled you know sort of a, a glimpsing a figure in the you know around the statue sort of thing i thought that that worked really well um but yeah i love the end you know the whole setup at the end of the climax um sort of the the, the reasons why people were dying I thought was actually quite good you know um again I think I've come across it before you know that sort of motive but um I thought it it suited this because it was sort of dropped in quite early on in the film um and then forgotten about and then you you find out at the end ah right okay you know it sort of picks it back up um yeah and and what happens to the guy I thought it was just genius. I thought, I thought that was really well done <laughs> with, with the filing cabinet. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm totally on board with this one. I really enjoyed it. Um, not a lot more to say about it because obviously we don't want to go into spoiler territory. We want you to go and discover this one. Uh, as Rich said, it's on Shudder and on DVD and Blu-ray. So please check it out. But before that, let's have some scores. So Steve, what are you going to score this one? I'll give it a five. A five, so so one higher than the killing field. <laughs> yeah, oh, I got, fair, enough. fair enough. I'm not going to. I'm not trying to change your opinion. I'm just observing your your scoring. <laughs> yeah, like I say, like I say, I wasn't wasn't. So you, you're just it, not no. impressed. Yeah, fair enough. No, no. Um, Rich, how are you going to score this one? An eight from me. An eight from you. Okay. Like this one a lot. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to join you on an eight. So two eights and a five. 
uh, for Seance. Go check it out. It's on Shudder. It's on DVD and Blu-ray. Our next review is The Devil to Pay. Living in an Appalachian community, Lemon Cassidy and her son wait the return of her husband. Instead, she is summoned by Tommy, the matriarch of one of the powerful clans, who demands that she complete a task that she'd given her husband. With her son being held captive until she returns, Lemon must walk a treacherous tightrope in order to survive. Um, this was a very slow burn to begin with. Um, and, and I was teetering on losing focus and, and losing interest in this altogether. Um, but slowly it sort of pulled me back in, I have to say. Um, I absolutely hated the character of Tommy. Um, mm. I thought she was awful. And, um, not, not just the character, but the way she was being played. Um, but you know, the character of Lemon, I thought she was really good. And you know, I think from the point of when uh, she goes to visit that guy who does the moonshine and has to do that delivery, then then I was totally on board from that point onwards. I, and I must admit, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this overall. Um, Steve, over to you first. Yeah, you're right. It is, uh, yeah, first 20 minutes, half an hour, it is a very, very slow burn, really. And it was quite, I wasn't 100% sure what was happening, to be fair, at one point, uh, where she finds her, her truck mm. that's, that's been missing, but her husband's, husband's taken. Um, but once it, she gets to like the hippie commune, like say, drops the stuff off, and that's just a bit of a weird scene. To be, to be fair, they came out of nowhere. It's an interesting tangent. Yeah, it just heads off yeah. in a weird direction for a moment. Um, and I agree. The uh, Tommy, she was awful. I mean, the character was awful, but the way she played it. But I thought Lemon wasn't. The performance was absolutely fantastic. She was brilliant. Loved her in it. And to be fair, she's such a powerhouse with it, you know, it, mm. it rests on her shoulders and God, the big shoulders and she, she really does play it beautiful. And it's absolutely beautifully shot. I mean, the location's absolutely gorgeous, you know, mm. the, the forest and the mountain that, that, that they're on is really nice. And there's some nice little twists in there as well, um, you know, where she goes back and the brothers have apparently dug a yeah, for someone. that's right. Yeah, that's, that's you know, really ominous. Yeah, yeah um, but it's one of them that's it's kind of got the o- ominous feel all the way through, if you know what I mean. Even from the start and even the slow bit, you, you know some some bad shit's going to go down, basically. Mm. Um, no, but overall, yeah, I enjoyed this one. Mm-hmm. Rich, what do you make of The Devil to Pay? I liked it a lot. Uh, I thought it was very... It, it really, I mean, yes, it is, it, it is a slow burn, yeah. I didn't sort of drift out of it in quite the same way as you did, Mike, although I do have some reservations about how things unfolded, which I think are slightly to the film's detriment, because otherwise otherwise, this would have pr- pr- this would have been a nine. I think mm. this, is, this, is, this is that good. Mm. But I think there's some, there's some uh, bits that are too conventional, uh, that you know, as for example, the Tommy character, it's just you know the the the, the matriarchal, you know, evil matriarch mm. who's who's you know all into baking and being overly pleasant. Mm. Uh, you know, that's just so it's so familiar. I mean, we, we've seen it in well, we covered Goldstone, didn't we? And the mm. the, the mayor or, or whatever the character she was, she was always baking pies and that and that. Yeah, and uh, but again, yeah, you know, it, it's kind of like what I've said before with, with with the various bad guys. They must be rehearsing these bits in their head or something. You know, yeah. how am I going to deal with this character? You know, <laughs> oh, how am I going to mm. feel seem really ominous and and you know, sort of scary? I know by by being as as bright and cheerful as I can be. 
you know, yeah. It, and even that uh, itself, the bright and cheerful villain, mm. is you know you see that everywhere. I mean, oh, yeah, in this, was, this yeah. particular iteration of the woman baking, you know, the, the homemaker kind of mm. character is just I just ah, oh, it, it it's just a bit of a shame, you know. It's like going to you mean even the Matrix did it in a different way with the Oracle, yeah. but the mm. um, um so for everything that's you know inventive and diff and slight you know familiar but you know a little bit inventive and different mm. uh it, it slightly leans back on some cl some formulaic moments and cliches and stuff which is, is slightly to i love the setting up of this you know you find yourself they do the opening uh, uh prologue on text mm. uh, you know text prologue uh saying how there's these communities who are completely isolated. i don't know how true this is or, but um could mm. quite possibly be well, look at jug face well, that's what I wrote down. I wrote down <laughs> as one particular example of what yeah. this of the genre that this is in. I mean, you know, Jugface, wrong. The recent Wrong Turn did it as well, which mm. is also yeah, in yeah. nature. Yeah, and also, and uh, you know, it's got that. It's it's a thriller, but it's got these folk horror overtones to it. Mm. It's not a horror movie, but there are there's a there's a, a sense of unease and you know be, that goes beyond typical suspense and you know there are mm. death scenes and stuff although it's, it's the like direct... people, you, got, you got people playing by rules that you don't understand yeah you know? i mean they set yeah. up this world and that you, you do it's mm. you know the you find yourself in this community with its rules and language culture and traditions and they, they mention them but they mention them so quickly you know it's hard yeah, to yeah. follow it and you know you've got to try and keep up and you know like steve was saying you know at times you do sort of lose your way of actually what's happening because you know that that you're suddenly you're sudden it's like suddenly being dropped into mm. uh, a, an alien community kind of thing with or you know cult um mm. and it's funny because mm. they kind of go as you say there's that that offshoot where they actually do visit a cult <laughs> i mean the whole thing of yeah. the the language in the community or whatever that's kind of cult like in its so in its own way but then they actually do visit a cult and uh, you know, there's the whole uh, Willy scene. <laughs> but the, um, is, but what the, I don't understand uh, is how uh, that killed him. <laughs> it's, uh, well, I, it's, 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 like, it's, it says it's it says it's vitriol, doesn't it? It, it says it, don't, so don't burns through that, But but I even think, so, yeah. I think they like one started with that. Then, <laughs> All right, you think they? Yeah, yeah. That think was where further. they started and carried on. <laughs> well, the, yeah, but that's a whole unexplored because they do that whole scene. Mm. And it doesn't really go anywhere, although it ends up being a thing that they come back to mm. to an extent. Yeah, but so Chekhov's it's Chekhov's gone in it. Yeah, yeah but, it, it is, yeah. but really, it didn't need to be that detailed of a scene to do that. But mm. it was an interesting. I, scene. I was really interested in in that, in that whole thing, like when she delivers the you know the vitriol to to this mm. um, community. I'm thinking, what, what the fuck's going to happen? You know, I, I was mm. expecting like a Jim Jones massacre sort of thing. They were yeah, yeah, all yeah, going to yeah, drink. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I was. You know, that, yeah. she's she going to be, she's going to be the only one stood there, <laughs> all these dead bodies. You know, but um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a very bizarre. Um, the only tangent, thing is, but... they haven't. The thing is, what mm. they don't. This is obviously isn't the first time that they've had that delivered. So I think what what they were doing that ritual and and you mm. know how you know one character goes and another mm. character steps in i think that's how their community Possibly. evolves yeah. and changes yeah. yeah um but they uh, as i say it's only ever sort of touched upon this is mm. leaning more into the uh going on a going on a um you know going on an errand running an mm. errand basically is the first bit and then it's kind of the trying to um Find to, you know save time. you know get mm. uh, save and get I revenge mean, and the only thing that annoyed me is what the actual thing is based on. Oh, wait, you. So you mean the motivating reasons? Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. You know, when he comes in and he explains it, and it's basically kind of well, about that... a treat. Mm. You know, it's like, mm, seriously? But the way that they're trying to play it, I thought was was really good. Well, it's all about small things, isn't it? About the importance mm. of yeah, these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In you know, really, uh, you know, minor, almost minor infractions yeah. we would see them as. Mm. But you could, you only have to look at some you know neighbours and and you know communities <laughs> or whatever to know to know how oh, yeah, seriously yeah, yeah. some people yeah. can take really small things. Yeah. And uh, 
I they were like, itching I, for a fight, though, weren't they? Basically? Yeah, that's the, that's yeah. the whole yeah. point. It's like, like itching to cause, you know, sort of some trouble, but trying to keep out of it at the same time. Yeah, there's some other sort of nice touches. You know, it, it's sort of you know, blink and you miss them kind of moments, uh, which which give you an idea of the you know, give you a flavour of the sort of world that mm. Lemon's living in when she's sort of like tre- walking to the uh, the other clan. Mm-hmm. And she passes um, a gate post or a, f- a fence post, and it's had someone's ear nailed, nailed to it. Mm. Yeah, you know, yeah. and then it's just it's like what? Okay. <laughs> and then you know the the, the sort of the um, the justice which was meted out on her husband as well. Mm. Um, you know, which she sort of like goes, yeah, that's a fair cop sort of thing. But it is you know pretty sort of harsh. Um, but that as well had a, had a nice sort of coda at the end when, when she actually finds out what happened. You know, I, I actually sort of quite like that. It reminded me a bit of um, Wind River uh, in, in, that, yeah. in that way. No, um, was, oh, well, you should. I've heard of it. <laughs> mm. But there are Shay. Um, yeah, it's the what, another thing. I sorry, another thing I thought was interesting was. Um, they when they go to, to these horror scenes, mm. they almost intentionally don't show you. They're like mm. denying you any sort mm. of any sort of thrill from you know seeing the horror. Uh, it's like they, yeah. they're just like, no, 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 we're not going to show you this. Kind of to yeah. the most part, anyway. Mm. But the other thing was with that um, the vitriol stuff and all that. Um, that made me think of, uh, of, of I think it was also taking film taking place in a similar area, which was uh, Savage, mm. where where that kind of you know, if you imagine in in that kind of situation, the the vitriol would have been used on the heroin. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. yeah but it, mm. it obviously, it's a completely different thing with this. Excellent. But no, I, I do stand. I just took fluids. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah. want to go back <laughs> to what Steve was saying, and uh, yeah, Lemon, uh, the actress playing mm. uh, Lemon, was uh, very, very good. Uh, it's, it's one other thing. It's it's one of the things that amuses me in in films when the bad guys suddenly become really indignant about the way they're being treated. <laughs> it's yeah. like um there's a particular thing towards the end where he sort of goes, Oh my god, what have you done? And it's like, dude, you were waiting to kill her and her son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were arguing over who was gonna k- kill her little boy. It's like, and, and now you're upset that you, you know things haven't quite gone your way. <laughs> it's it seems like that just just amuse me. It's like, oh my god. But there you go. <laughs> so anyway. Um, another thing to mention is this is basically a, a production from and starring people we're, we're not really familiar with. It's like mm. pr- practically a cast mm. and crew of unknowns. I mean, the writer directors are the uh, they were they were the writers of Becky, or at least two oh, of the right. writers of Becky. Yeah, uh, which I haven't seen yet, but was is uh, uh, looks makes quite, a good looks double, very interesting. It is good. It makes a double, good double bill with the aggression scale. Okay, yeah, and um, yeah, I thought I mean the uh, Dan was it Dan uh, Danielle Deadweiler who's the the lead mm. in this. Mm. She was also in uh, the Harder They Fall, the recent Western, which also oh, right, really, yeah, yeah. really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You watched that yet? I, I haven't seen that Netflix. yet. No, yeah, I do need to see that. No, um, the um, so yeah, the, the, there's a, there's a lot of talent here, and mm. I'm I'm very interested to see what these what these folks do next. Absolutely, yeah. Lane and Rucker's Sky, um, the writing directors for this. Um, thoroughly enjoyed it. So, scores on the doors. Uh, Steve? Um, I'm going to knock a point off for the terrible, terrible Tony, whatever she's called. So, I'm going to give it a seven. Mm-hmm. And Rich? I like Tony, uh, but I am not. I am sorry, sorry. Tommy. Tommy. Tommy, sorry. I, I like Tommy, but the. Um... As a, as I said earlier, this is practically it would have been a nine if it if it wasn't a bit with characters such as Tommy a bit too cliched. Uh, definitely a high eight though. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to join Steve on this one as a seven. It it might improve on on a second watch, but you know that the opening sort of 10, 15 minutes um, just didn't go anywhere for me. Um, it did sort of like. You know, it um, sealed the bond between some mother and son. But other than that, you know, there wasn't any sort of real story going on um, mm. until those guys turn up. 
but so that's why. So two sevens and an eight for the devil to pay. Go check it out. Our next review is C for me. When blind former skier Sophie cat sits in a secluded mansion, three thieves invade for the hidden safe. Sophie's only defense is on the other end of a phone in the form of army veteran Kelly, who helps Sophie defend herself. Um, we've kind of seen this genre before. Uh, we covered a film called Ropes early last year. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, mm-hmm. sort of persons, you know, um, sort of trapped in a location with some sort of disability, trying to overcome the odds. Um, I thoroughly enjoy this, I have to say. I'll come on to more later. But Steve, what did you make of C for me? I really enjoyed this as well, actually. Um, I thought it was really well done. You know, with the the app with the other woman on the other end. Um, how what what the house invasion was over? I thought it was actually done quite well. Um, you know, you got your chose like you know the, the copper turning up and trying to get it away. What what did interest me is the character isn't really well. She's not really likable in points. You know. Hmm. she's a little bit of a bitch to be fair and you know she's doing this to rip people off or yeah she's, she's sort of lashing out as she she, looks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah you know and the fact that when the police are on the way she tries to get with the crooks to, to I mean it's like you know is she doing it to get the money or is she doing it just to Secure a safety, or you know, that mm. little little things like that. I thought really did it well, and I thought the performance was really good. Um, the way it's shot as well. It's one of them, you know. There's, there's a bit on, you know, mobile cameras. I'd say, you know, mobile phone cameras and stuff mm. like that, and it, it just worked really, really well for me. Uh, yeah, really enjoyed this one. Uh, Rich, over to you. Yeah, I, I really like. I mean, I thought it was very impressive from the get go. I think the 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 whole film looks fantastic, and it sounds fantastic. You mm. know, the music and and the sound design and everything. Uh, the uh, this is another one where we've got a cast of for most mostly cast of unknowns. Uh, there's a few. There's a couple of names in there. Mm. Um, we'll get onto, but the. Uh, the lead mm. actress, who is blind herself, is very good. Uh, Skylar Davenport. Yes, she's. There are some. There's some interesting things with her character. I'm not quite on, necessarily fully on board with what where it goes and stuff. But what I quite liked about it was it is set up as, oh, here we go again. It's another, you know, people in a house you know something happened you know wired shut and as, as you were saying mm, uh, the, yeah. uh, mm. uh, other home invasion kind of movies uh, you know things like panic room were coming to mind and and stuff but um but then it deviates a bit and it sort of goes into unexpected territory but then i think what i didn't like was it kind of goes into unexpected territory but then it kind of goes back to normal territory it kind of goes yeah. back to what kind <laughs> of what what is more routine uh, so I thought that was a little bit of a shame, but you know I cannot fault you know the quality of the um, you know the, the 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 look and the feel and the and the and the performances in it. And you know it's a brisk thriller, very well you know very worth seeing. And uh, what is this? What else have I written down here? Uh, yeah, the the stuff with the stuff with the the app, which is kind of the anchor for it. You know the the uh, mm. the person who on the end of a phone who's helping her out so that's another genre in itself is kind of you know whether it's cellular or uh not phone booth but you know that's like mm. cellular and there was that one yeah. i think the call was it the, the, yeah the, the um halle berry one, one. Halle yeah. berry one stuff i haven't mm. seen it but i, I think yeah. i've got an idea of what that kind of you know there's been there's been those kind of person on the end of a phone movies you know yeah yeah and yeah, uh, yeah. and this kind of does that Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it does it all right. It kind of dis- uses that device and then drops it. 
and then kind of sort of picks it up again and whatever. It's not kind of it's it, it seems a bit indec- indecisive about what it's doing. It's kind of it's leaning into one direction and then it's sort of leaning. Out. It's it's trying to do, it think, I think it's trying to do a couple of too too many things in, in trying to be a bit more novel. But uh, I really enjoyed it and. Uh, uh, state, uh, Mike, uh, I'll let you share your thoughts. Now. <laughs> yeah, um, the, the music for this is really good. I, I really like, enjoyed the sort of synth score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, for, uh, sort, mm. sort of really driving. Um, but yeah, the, you know, the the, the idea, it, the setup is great. You know, you've got this woman who's recently divorced, um, gone away to Paris or somewhere, um, and left this girl sort of cat sitting for sort of the weekend or something um and then you know so not long after she's gone suddenly these guys sort of turn up and break in um and they they know exactly what they're after you know they're not, not they're just there to loot the place you know they're, they're after a specific thing you know um our hero she she doesn't even realize there's a safe behind this huge painting in, in the in the living room um and, and the setup, you know, the, the way it works, this would not work on a small house. You couldn't do this at a small house. You need a mansion. No. You, you need plenty yeah. of room for her to sort of be able to move from room to room without being detected, you know, at least early on. Um, the the cinematography is superb as well. You know, the, the lighting mm. throughout this uh, really works very well. And, yeah, this, you know, this girl, I, th- I think, you know, she... She has a bit of some moment of clarity uh, at a certain point in the film um, where, you know, she she realises her actions are sort of, you know, putting people in danger. Um, and it does sort of make us, you know, grow up a little bit, I think. Um, but yeah. It's funny, I was, I was just thinking there's a there's a little bit of a parallel with, with Killing Field. You know how you've got that bunch of characters so they invade that guy's mm. area or whatever mm. looking for something and then there's mm. there's the guy who's the leader and then there's the the leader's leader who then comes mm. in <laughs> it's like follows yeah. a similar path yeah. really. a little bit a little bit but but this is immensely better oh of course it is yeah, I mean, yeah <laughs> for, you know, and again it's a single location but um mm. they, they, they seem to do a lot more with it um yeah it just really works there is that sort of interesting trope you, you mentioned cellular which which went all in because because mobile phones you know also you know were, were relatively new back then. Um, it was the um, Kim Basinger and Jason, Jason Statham. Statham and Chris Evans. Mm-hmm. Chris Evans, that's right. And um, you know back then it was it's still quite new. So so it's like oh no the phone's dying oh no you know all this sort of stuff got to get recharged. And so so we get that towards the end and and, and basically you know this girl's had a camera on the whole time so yeah she is going to drain the battery (laughs) over the course of the film Mm -hmm. that's that's very believable um yeah but the idea of the app i think was really cool i I like the the fact that you know she does the first person it's like oh i suppose you're gonna have to get a locksmith all all this sort of crap it's like yeah fuck okay Um, okay but here's the thing with the app right mm -hmm. she hasn't had to put in any credit card details or (laughs) Or anything. It's like, what That's is it like a charity yeah. app or something? It's like yeah. it doesn't seem to be the case because the the person who's on the other end seems to be like doing it as a job. But having said that, you know, her phone's probably already set up for that sort of stuff. You know, mm, put in you put in your app that you know it'll just copy all your your details. So yeah, maybe maybe. Mm. Kind of a charge by the uh, hour. Yeah, they've got it. I know they've got to leap the film forward a little bit. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's like she's not signed a oh, uh, user on. agreement gonna, or uh, yeah. how much it's actually going to cost. Or... <laughs> well, yeah, because <laughs> anyway. she's blind, they'll have to read, it'd be re, you know, read, read the text well, kind of thing. Wouldn't it? So we'll be yeah. there forever as goes through all the terms yeah. and conditions. <laughs> so there, right? Okay, you know, yes, accept, accept, accept. <laughs> yeah. But that would have been good if they'd have just done a bit where she just goes, yeah, yeah, whatever, you know, kind of yeah. just accepts mm-hmm. it. But I would have. That, I would have preferred that rather than. I know I'm looking way too deep into it. I know getting in the weeds. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting in the weeds. Yeah, but yeah, no. It's, uh, I thought this worked really well. It's it's a good example of the genre. Um, Did you like him, many... Coates? Yeah, it was good to see him turn up. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this is does well. Um, so scores on the doors. Let me kick off with an eight out of ten. Uh, Steve. Yeah, eight out of ten. Mm-hmm. And Rich. 
Yes, definitely an eight out of ten. Yeah, three eights for C for me. Just one thing, guys. Um, the original title for this film apparently was it was in Spanish. Uh, well, I don't know. I mean, that on IMDb, it's got that. I yeah. don't know why. Which totally throws, didn't we? Because it's you a know, Canadian it's a, movie. So Canadian movie. So Mira por mi is Spanish. I'm pretty sure it's Spanish, not French. Well, the director is a Japanese Canadian. Uh, but so mm. no, he's Canadian. Just, so I, I, I don't. That doesn't make any sense. I, no, I think that's an make, anomaly. On it, it's just a weird one. That one. Yeah. So Randall Akito is the um, is the director for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So three eights. It's our highest scoring film of the week. We definitely think you should go and check this out. Our short shot this week is Swarm. A MMA fighter finds her training interrupted when a zombie outbreak hits her neighborhood. Um, Where's this set? Is this Thailand, I think? I thought it was um, in the US. In the US? Yeah, it's, not really, it's not really specified. It's not really specified. You're right. But the, no, there I'm, is a, a, I'm, I'm an American guy conclusions. working there. They're talking English. And stuff, True. So. Yeah. I, think it's, okay. I think it's like Los Angeles or something. So we got this, this sort of young woman sort of training with her father, who's the coach. Um, things aren't going well between them. He goes out to the car to pack up and gets attacked by a zombie and comes back in. Um, I'm going to hold fire for a sec. So, Steve, what did you make of uh, Swarm? Um, I actually enjoyed this one. It was a, a little bit generic, you know, with, with the training and blah, 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 and then the dad goes out comes back in and turns to the zombie. But there's just that one scene where it kind of flashes back to her as a kid, which really hammered home, you know, the relationship between the father and the daughter. And I thought that that just that little scene between between them mm. was great. It was really really good, and it got a little bit comedic at the end as well with the. You know the, the, the janitor or whatever and stuff, but I, I actually really enjoyed this one. I thought it, it just gave it that emotional depth that hmm. some shorts don't get because you know they're just trying to go over it, or, or they haven't got time to go over it, should I say, or whatever. But it just gave it that little bit of extra punch, hmm. not not intended as a punch. Yep. <laughs> Uh, Rich, you are our curator of shorts. So, what what caught your eye with this one? Uh, well, I, I, to be honest, I, I, yeah, I did like it, and uh, I, I will go into it. But I, I just want to get you to, I want to let you have your mm -hmm. uh, say first. It's, I, I thought tonally it was a bit all over the place, but I agree with Steve. The um, the scene when she's having a fight at dad, and at the same time remembering the good times when she, when she was younger. Um, you know, what it really did have that sort of emotional punch that um, a lot of sort of fight movies, uh, fight shorts that we see uh, just don't get to. Um, mm. uh, and it was that sort of element which really elevated this and, and sort of made it a bit different to other zombie slash fight movies we've, um, we've come across. Yeah, it is the heart of the film, that, that moment. Yeah. It's very did you open ended. Like it I, I, yeah, I did. Um, I, th I think the name's a bit disingenuous. Um, where's the swarm? Where is it? You know, it hasn't arrived mm. yet. We just got, you know, got one or two sort of. Errant you didn't turn zombies. off. You didn't turn up. Turn off at the end credits, did you? Of course, I did. Ah. <laughs> you mean? Ah, okay. Oh no! This is the shot at the end. You know, when when the sort of camera's sort of pulling back. Oh, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. No, of course yeah. I saw that. Yeah, um, so that's the swarm. But again, it wasn't me. Really, yeah, well, I think still, it's like a. Um, uh, I, I, I'm, if, you, I think, if, if it's a proof of concept or a prologue, yeah. I think it works well. Yeah, yeah I think that's what it is. Yeah. Hope for, hopefully. And, yeah. No, the mm. I thought it. I thought it was shot really well. I I, I liked the. See when it first started and the. the um, because they don't establish them as, if I'm, please correct me if I'm wrong, I've watched it twice. So I, I, I don't think they establish their father and daughter until that flashback. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah. It's sort of, you can, you can imply it, but it's uh, kind of, they don't actually sort of hammer it home. 
until then. Uh, but when it started, I was like, is that Philip Ree from Best of the Best? I was like, he just looks just like him. And I, and I was convinced it, it, it must be. It's not. It's a guy called Dan Tenu, mm-hmm. uh, who's, a, who's a stunt guy who's done, you yeah. know, tons of stuff, uh, in, including Shang-Chi and, and uh, Terminator and all sorts. Anyway, the... Um, I thought he was really good, and she was, and the actress, uh, uh, please uh, forgive me, uh, Lee, uh, I think is her name, uh, or Lehi, uh, Leafy Kim, uh, as the as the the daughter, the fighter character is good. Mm-hmm. They established, you know, that she's getting ready for a fight, and he says, "You're fighting a swarmer." And so that's yeah. where the swarm thing sort of comes from. And I'm thinking, is that an MMA term, a swarmer? Mm. I haven't looked it up, but um, I, I wonder if maybe it is because that would because co- otherwise I was thinking, is this set in a future where, you know, people fight zombies MMA style? Is that what this is? And it was like, no, it's, it's <sighs> not. But that's what I did wonder if that was what it was going to be. Uh, so I don't know. I'd, I'd have to investigate that. But the, I thought it, yeah, shot really well. It's all set around this. Uh, gym uh i think i agree with you mike there's some tonal bits you know that don't quite work uh the bit that that scene where you know with the flashbacks where the fight between uh, uh father and daughter slows down you know mm-hmm. and it, so for me that was kind of I'm a, I'm a bit disappointed that it's you know it's pulling back from you know what i was like it, it's going to be like a full-on in, intense fight scene between the two of them and then mm-hmm. it kind of it denies you that and instead you know it presents you with this uh intimate flashback and uh then it kind of cuts and you 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 can imply what's happened and stuff but you know she it cuts to her sort of just outside and 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 then the janet there's the stuff with janet and 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 then it's sudden it, there's this moment at the end where it suddenly just feels like well that's a weird you know it's 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 a cool end point mm. in a way but it just sort of feels a bit weird to, to, to end it there. And then after a few credits, then we get the other, the, the sort of Resident Evil pullback shot, which I liked. Mm. But yeah, the, yeah. It, it's it's a little, I loved it, but it's a little bit uh, in, um, I can't remember what, insubstantial. You know, mm. there's, there's, there's mm. it's, it's doesn't quite, things don't quite gel. But I do think it's very polished, very well produced. Uh, if it is a proof of concept, as it appears to be, I'd be very interested to see where they take it. Um, I liked, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not familiar with any of the car. It, it, this isn't, um, this isn't an action short. There is, you know, there is some fighting actually, but it's more sort of pushing away, running away the, from the zombie yeah, yeah. kind of stuff, rather than any mm. sort. of... This isn't a martial arts it's, film. It's not an intricately choreographed fight no, scene or anything like no, that. No, it's yeah. not any, that's not that's not what this is going for. This is more of a zombie movie, but with the sort of uh, trying to touch on the emotional core of of how this is impacting uh, a father daughter relationship. But they, it's kind of yeah, it's it needs more. There, there definitely needs to be more here. But I would definitely recommend it. I think it's definitely well worth watching. Mm. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Okay. Um, we don't score the shorts, but we certainly recommend you check them out. And you will find a link to this in the footnotes below. Please check it out. Our DTV throwback this week is The Demolitionist. When an undercover police officer is murdered, she is brought back to life by the Lazarus Project, which also provides her with enhanced abilities. Able to go where normal cops fear to tread, the so-called demolitionist's mission is hampered by her own desire for revenge against the criminal mastermind who killed her. Um, do you think the uh, the people who wrote the screenplay to RoboCop got any royalties from this? They should have. They're really bloody so sure. <laughs> they, got, yeah. they got about as much as the writers of La Femme Nikita. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, this is enjoyable, I have to say. Um, I, I was sort of falling asleep at certain points, but that wasn't really the film's fault. Um, it is ultra cheap. Uh, the sets are, no. are sort of, um, you know, very, very, very spare. But I, I did like the energy in this, I must admit. Um, Steve, what did you make of The Demolitionist? 
Yeah, it's, it's female Robocop all over. I mean, the performances are so over the top, especially uh, Richard Grieco. Um, it, 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 it was made for a tenor and a, and a packet of fags, basically, weren't it? You know <laughs> what I mean? Um, but yeah, it's, it, it's fun. It's, it's not great. It's, it, it's a fun, cheap beer and pizza on a Friday night type of film, to be fair. Um, bit yeah. silly, bit daft, but it is what it is. You know what I mean? I don't I think people, some people are getting any enjoyment out of it. I just think they'd probably turn over off after the first scene, which again <laughs> is ridiculously over the top, especially with the executions. Mm. Um, yeah, it, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Um, Rich, you, you sort of dug this one out. Uh, we, we were sort of talking about what films are going to cover in the throwback, mm. and you put forward this one and The Stranger um, just before mm. Christmas. And, uh, so, um, yeah, this this I must admit this is quite interesting. Um, I, I imagine this is a second watch for you. Yes, uh, I, I'll be honest. I felt a little bit, a bit let down by it then, and I do still feel a bit let down by it. I think it's mm. it's got potential, but. Uh, you know, seeing seeing it all these years later, there's other things I do n- notice in it, but I think I can articulate why I, what wasn't working for me at the time and still doesn't. I think the film peaks too early. Mm. I think bef- actually the stuff mm. before she becomes a demolitionist is 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 actually the best part of the movie, where Richard you know Richard Grieco's there, the. Uh, the mayor, uh, played by Susan Terrell, you know, really hamming it up. Mm. Uh, it's got that. Mm. It's it's really going for that um, uh, campy '60s Batman, but post Tim Burton Batman kind of thing. Which um, uh, another film called the Superhero Movie called Black Scorpion was has kind of oh, yeah. did that around the same time. Mm. The you know it's all you know the sort of twisted angles, the bit of, you know the, the dry ice machines and or yeah. whatever it is and stuff. So, uh, you know, all shot mm. on, you know, sets. Um, so there's a lot of energy in that first part and then it becomes and the, the La Femme Nikita story, part, you know, La Femme Nikita meets Robocop kind of stuff happens. I don't think Nicole Egger is strong enough to sort of, in, you know, to carry that role. Uh, she doesn't actually get a huge amount to do. There's, there's, a, there's a whole section in the middle where it's like, you know, feeling depressed about the whole thing you know, and being unhappy and whatever. And it just, that didn't really work for me. It's, it's just becomes a bit of a drag. Uh, Richard Grieco mm. isn't around at this point. And, and there's, it's just a bit bleak. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I think, you know, cause yeah, that's, that's the other thing. You get loads of other cameos and stuff towards um, the start and throughout, you know, through the movie, you've got um, Reggie Bannister turns up, Heather Lagenkamp for, uh, from, uh, mm. Not on Elm Street, Elm Street, he's a reporter. Yeah. And uh, this is directed by Roger, Robert Kurtzman, by the way, who's uh, yeah. who also did Wishmaster, which was also cameo filled, and uh, 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 The Rage, which I didn't like much later. No, the other one with but, Andrew Divov. Yeah. But he's, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. R- Robert Kurtzman is a special effects guy from uh, KMV. Yeah. The yeah. you know, Ra- Rage was thing. pretty awful. Yeah. I think. Uh, he, I think, um, isn't Tom Savini in this as well? Yes, he is. Yep. He's yeah. sold henchman number two or something. Like yeah, that. so he's mm. henchman. so there's loads of people in it. Um, so they clearly sort of got, you know got everyone on board. Um, the the demolitionist stuff when she's out and about doing her thing, the action sequences are really just her firing some guns and stuff. That the, the action sequences are are not great in my view. And so, what about yeah. the blood squibs in this? Because it's like. Yeah, it's- Paint it's like powder pink. or something. It's it's like yeah. pink pink paint powder. It's not it's not actually liquid. It's like it's like pink mm. flour sort of stuffed in their jerseys or something. So I'll be honest, I didn't take note of that. It sounds, it um, sounds it's very strange. Yeah. But that must uh, have been an aesthetic they were got. I mean, this is a special effects guy, he knows what he wants. Mm. You know, he's got he's got if he wants a big, you know, bloody scene or whatever, he would have got it. So I guess See, that's, that's what that I was expecting. The... With, with with the likes mm. of you know for, Considering it's Kurtzman and considering that Tom Savini was on board, mm. I was kind of expecting a bit more, you know, decent sort of makeup effects throughout the film. But instead, we yeah. get this sort of weird, you know, very head scratching sort of like, uh, you know, 
pink powder sort of like being uh-huh. sort of blasted everywhere. The aesthetic is quite good though. I mean, the um, you know we, we get lots of these sort of big arch windows with lights, you know, with the um, you know sort of like light beams coming through them and stuff. It's very very sort of Russell Mulcahy kind of thing, mm-hmm. um, which, which I quite mm-hmm. liked. I like the costume. Um, I must admit it's it's very oh, anime. Good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very anime. Yeah. It's, um, there's a Japanese film called Kashern, which yes. had a very yeah, similar, similar face. Mask, it's, yeah. it's a film yeah. I hate, by the way. Kashern, I think it's just, it's a bit pretentious. It's so nihilistic. It is. It is. You know, if you can ever have like a a film which has decent action scenes and good special effects, but at the same time is the most miserable thing to watch, that is <laughs> Kashern. It is. You know wrist slitting kind of stuff it's awful anyway back to this this isn't wrist slitting sort of stuff it is a bit perplexing watching it i was thinking this is so robocop it really is yeah even, even down to a scene where these two thugs grab this woman off the street and yeah, sort of, yeah 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 um, yeah yeah and you got <laughs> yeah. the, the um you know their silhouettes on the billboard behind them and stuff and i thought you're not even trying to hide <laughs> Yeah, you know, no, yeah. not trying to mask this at all. Now you're just like blatantly riffing off. I'm so I'm kind of surprised they didn't have an ED two oh nine sort of knocking around. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, even the sort you know it's kind of sort of twist at the end where it's like you know the police sort of turn on um, the demolitionists and things like that, but but done on a much smaller scale, of course. Yeah. How did you feel about Bruce Abbott as the sort of leader of the? The program that turns her into the demolitionist. I thought he. Was I just okay. felt he was miscast. He just. Think... Hmm. Was, was, he right, to, you know. was he meant to be a priest or something at some point? Was he like an ex-priest or something? Mm, well, no, I, I don't know. I don't yeah, think, I think so. I, so. He's just a professor of. Uh, oh, he's maybe like a that's scientist. What it was. Yeah. But he's he's like the. He's like the character who, um, in. The versions of La Femme Nikita or, or Point of No mm. Return, or yeah, he's the know, sort of Checky Carrier character. He's yeah. yeah, that character who's kind of the, mm. he's not he's bad, but um, he's he's not you know certain yeah. aspects of him maybe not so bad. Whatever. Mm. I, I, I just didn't think any of that unfortunately worked. He, he I think they needed a more mature actor for that role. I think having I think I didn't buy him. Just, yeah, were they were they trying to sort of push a sort of love interest at one point? I think maybe, so. Yeah. I think mm. they were trying to sort of develop it that yeah. way. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just uh, I think, as I say, I like the I like the the look of the, you know the title and the the uh, the you know the costume and everything and the, the you know the marketing you know that looks great. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, having all the great cameos and perform, you know recognizable character actors and stuff pepper throughout the film is great. I quite like the I like the sort of campy you know the the RoboCop Batman meets old mm. Batman as you know aesthetic kind of thing mm. i like that i just think it run it just doesn't get into gear unfortunately when after that first after the first part when the setup i think becoming the demolitionist and, and all that stuff just whether it's miscasting or or, or a problem with the script or, or or the action i don't know it just i just kind of yeah i, I watched it but it was you know it was not a sat- it was not satisfying, unfortunately. And you know what? Is it is it or is it because they're old that these these films have that sort of I don't know misty look, or is that an aesthetic to it? I, I, I think it's partly because it was shot on video. I think as well. So, so you're never going to yeah. get sort of like a you know a high def sort of version of this. Mm. Um, I think what we had is is probably as good as it gets. But I think some some of it is as an aesthetic because because they wanted those. You know, sort of the light beams coming through the windows, yeah, yeah. you know, all that sort of stuff. And like you say, the Russell Moore case. Yeah, all that. So, so you know, the more sort of uh, misty, sort of smoky atmosphere is going to sort of show off the light, you know, silhouettes and things mm. better. Mm-hmm. So sp- speaking of the actual format we saw this in, this, this wasn't on um, Amazon or Netflix, but this was on an official uh, YouTube channel. Um, which one was it, Rich? Uh, it's the it's the one of the, the film's producer Donald P. Borcher's mm. uh, a YouTube channel where he's posting various uh, documentaries and and films that he's worked on in his during his career. You know the ones that he's got mm. the rights yeah. to be able to do so. Mm-hmm. 
For example, um, he did Children of the Corn. There's a documentary about Children of the Corn, but he hasn't posted Children of the Corn, I think, because that one's quite well owned yeah. by yeah. Arrow or someone at the moment. But yeah, but this is this is literally the only way you're going to see this legitimately at the moment. Um, it is worth checking out for sure. It's very of its time. Yes. I mean, there's a lot. There was a lot of this stuff happening. You know, these Robocop ripoffs and these, you know, um, trying to yeah. take. I mean, Barbed Wire would be another clear influence because yeah. you know that mm-hmm. that was another action movie where they took a a Baywatch star, and I think they were trying to do that with Nicole yeah. Eggert. She just doesn't so, have. I always the remember. Same yeah. I always remember um, Barry Norman talking about Barbed Wire. And he's sort of saying how there's this over, overhead shot of her in, in the in the lift, sort of looking down. She's wearing this sort of very tight, um, sort of balcony bra kind of top. And he says, it basically, it looked like she was hugging two bald people to her chest. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we don't score the, uh, the throwbacks, but we certainly recommend you check them out. This is a nice sort of, um, you know, it's, it's one of those films of its time, as Rich said. It's a it's, beer and a pizza movie, isn't it? It's a beer and a pizza mm. movie, as long yeah. as that beer is skull uh, or something as cheap, you know, tenants. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not for your highbrow oh. beers, this one. It's, you know, stone go to the carling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and the stone baked pizza from Asda or somewhere. But nevertheless, it, we think it's worth checking out. And that is the end of this week's show. So thank you for listening. Thank you to Steve and Rich for joining me again to review these films and put up with another Bruce Willis effort. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll give, it, <laughs> give it you this time. I think we've got more on the horizon, haven't we, Rich? There's more Willis we heading that way. By the time you guys are listening, <laughs> you guys are listening to this. I think two other Bruce Willis movies have already been released yeah. on, uh, on VOD. So Absolutely. I think we're going to be getting quite a few this year. Indeed. Um, check out our Facebook and Twitter pages at the DTV, at the DTV Digest. Uh, also check out the short shots on Twitter where Rich uh, posts a new link to a short every night around about eight o'clock. Thank you for listening. Tune in again next time. Thank you for listening to the DTV Digest. Let us know your thoughts in the comments and tune in again next time.